Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at all the monsters you can use in Warcry. Throughout this video, I'll be taking all the information from the Grand Alliance supplement books for Warcry, and we're going to look at all the different monsters for each Grand Alliance. We'll go through the monster hunting abilities that the fighters can use against them, and we'll look at how you can use the monsters in either your warband and different ways to play before looking through all the fighter cards for all the monsters that are available in the game. Each of the Grand Alliance books will give you the monsters that you can use with the different factions within each Grand Alliance. And now some are only going to have two, like with the Sentinels of Order and the Bringers of Death, while the Harbingers of Destruction have got three monsters and the Agents of Chaos are going to have access to seven monsters. Monsters are fighters with a gargantuan rune mark, and you can see that here. And each fighter that's a monster will have that on their fighter card, so you can see it circled here in the yellow. And each Grand Alliance will have their own rune mark for the monsters as well, and then any other rune mark is going to relate to an ability for that specific monster and we're going to go through all the monsters individually and their individual abilities later on. Deploying a monster is a little bit different to deploying a regular fighter and when you're deploying a monster they must be placed wholly within five inches horizontally of a deployment point instead of wholly within three inches. The activation is a little bit different too as a monster can be activated three times in a battle round instead of only once but each time it is activated, it can make only one action instead of two. And also each time a monster is activated, it can use one ability before or after its action. If a monster makes a wait action, its activation immediately ends though, and the monster is not said to be waiting, and the rules for waiting do not apply. A monster can climb and jump just like any other fighter. However, if at the end of a move action, its base is not wholly on a platform or the battlefield floor, then it's said to have fallen. And if a monster is said to have fallen, any part of the model's base can be placed on the point picked by your opponent instead of just the centre. Although some monsters can pick up huge rocks and throw them, monsters can never carry treasure. Monsters with the Chaotic Beast rune mark which you're going to find for all the monsters in the Agents of Chaos book, can be used with any twist card that brings chaotic beasts into play. So this is a great way to bring some awesome models into your game. For me, the best part about monsters is that you can include them in your warband, and you can only use the monsters that have the correct rune mark for each of the different Grand Alliance, though. So, for example, you couldn't use a chaotic beast in a Grand Alliance warband. Depending on the way you play will affect how you can use a monster and in open play when you muster for a battle you can include one monster in your warband and monsters cost points just like any other fighter but are ignored for the purposes of the rule that requires all fighters in a warband to share the same faction room mark but they do have to have the correct Grand Alliance room mark. In narrative play, you have to win certain challenge battles, which will allow you to add a monster to your warband roster. And you can only include one monster at any time. So that's an important note for narrative play. But just like regular fighters, monsters can receive destiny levels and players must make injury rolls for them. However, monsters can never bear lesser artifacts or artifacts of power and can never be chosen to become favoured warriors either. And finally, we've got match play, and usually monsters can't be included in warbands in match play battles, but if both players agree, then players can certainly use the open play rules for monsters in their match play games, and then that'll allow them to include one monster in their warband, but both have to agree on that. If any monsters are in play, all fighters, except those monsters themselves, and any fighters with the beast room mark, can use what's called monster hunting abilities. And we can see these on the table that we're gonna look at now. And these monster hunting abilities can be used as well as all the regular universal abilities 
and whichever faction abilities that different warbands are going to come with. These six abilities are all found in each of the supplement books, so you'll be able to find these no problem. And in the Agents of Chaos book, I'm looking at them on page nine. And so we've got six altogether. We've got three doubles, two triples, and a quad. And these are going to give you some really nice abilities that you can use when either tackling the monster or if you're targeted by the monster. So I think these are really great and really build into the fun, the narrative of the game. And this helps to like balance it a bit. For me, Warcry isn't balanced and I like it like that. I don't really need it to be all that balanced. And sometimes it's fun when you just get completely destroyed or uh, a weaker warband or weaker fighter on the luck of the dice can take out some heavy opponents. And But I think having these monster hunting abilities really does help make it almost believable that you can bring these big monsters in and include them in a warband. I'm not going to read all six of these because they really apply to the fighters fighting against the monsters. But let's just look at the first one, which is a double called Binding Ropes. And again, this is playing into the narrative. So we pick an enemy fighter with the gargantuan rune mark. And it's got to be within one inch of this fighter and then roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each four plus, subtract one from the move characteristic of that fighter, which is the monster, to a minimum of three until the end of the battle. So the idea with this is you've thrown some ropes over the monster, you're tugging at it, you're stopping it moving, and you're just slowing it down so then your fellow warriors can move in and attack it. So I really like how they've done that with these abilities, and you can see from the names exactly what they're going to be about. Dodge and evade, jump on its back, go for the eyes, a gutting strike, and taunt as well. So all these can play into your tactics and really help you take on these big beasts. Now we've got the monster abilities. And monsters can't use regular universal abilities. So instead, if there are any monsters in play, they can use these three monster abilities that you can see here. So let's read through each one. And then when we go through the individual monsters after this, you'll know that those monsters can all choose to use any of these three abilities in addition to their own. And the first is a double called Monstrous Reach. And until the end of this fighter's activation, do not count the vertical distance when measuring the range for attack actions made by this fighter. So we don't have to take that diagonal measurement, which I think is really good. We can just do the horizontal. So that's really going to cut down on that and make sure that you can attack. And that's going to represent the height of the monster, I guess, as they swipe at the enemy. Then we've got a triple called Drag and Maul. And with this, we pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter. Remove that fighter from the battlefield and set them up within one inch of this fighter. Then roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each four plus, allocate three damage points to that fighter. So here, the enemy fighter has been dragged that six inches towards the monster. And then as they've got them within one inch, They've just bashed them around a bit and caused some damage. And then finally, we've got a quad called Demolishing Rampage. And here we pick a terrain feature within one inch of this fighter. And in an order of your choice, place each objective, treasure token and fighter that is on that terrain feature and on any other terrain feature that is on that terrain feature. Put them on the battlefield floor in a location of your choice as close as possible horizontally to its current location. Then, in an order of your choice, each fighter placed on the battlefield in this manner suffers impact damage. Then you remove that terrain feature. So I really like this ability. The idea is that they grab that piece of terrain, shake it, all the fighters and everything on it fall to the ground. They, gr they grab the terrain, throw it across the battlefield, so then that's off as it bounces across. And then all the fighters that fell from that piece of terrain suffer impact damage as they fall to the ground. So there we go. That's all the abilities you can use with the, all the monsters. So let's go through them all now individually. We'll look at their fighter cards, their abilities, and all the stats that come with them. All right, let's get started with the Sentinels of Order and the War Hydra. And you'll see that we've got the fighter card and we've also got a damage table. And if you haven't used the monsters or used this damage table before, I'll explain it here. And then you'll know that that applies to all the monsters we'll go through for the rest of this video. So basically with the damage table, it starts off in the left hand column with damage points allocated. So if your monster hasn't had any damage, so from zero up to 10 points of damage allocated to them. In the case of our War Hydra here, the movement is gonna be six and the damage is gonna be four on a hit 
an eight on a critical hit. And then as the monster takes more damage, so as more damage points are allocated to them, their movement is gonna be reduced and also the damage output is gonna be reduced all the way down until we get to 41 to 49 damage points allocated bracket where the movement is reduced to just two and the damage is reduced to two on a hit and four on a critical hit. And then everything else on the fighter card is going to be pretty much the same as all the other fighters we're used to. So we get the points here. We know it's going to cost us 315 points to use. We've got the rune mark for the Grand Alliance of Order. And then we've got the Gargantuan rune mark and one other. So we know there's going to be an ability specific to this monster. We've got a weapon range of two inches. So claws and teeth are going to be two inch range up to two inches. And they can make four attacks. It's strength five, and then we've gone through the damage already. Get As we start the battle, that damage is going to be four on a hit and eight on a critical hit. And then we've got a movement of six to start off with, and that's going to reduce as he gets more damage points allocated all the way down to two. It's got a toughness of four and can take 50 wounds. And this seems really high, 50 wounds. I mean, it is high. It's huge. Um, but once you start inflicting damage and targeting it from a number of fighters, you'll soon get those damage points down. And then that really reduces the capabilities of the monster. The War Hydra comes with three abilities of his own. And the first is a double called Quick with a Lash, where we add half the value of this ability, round it up, to the move characteristic of the fighter for the next move action they make this activation. Then we've got a triple called Fiery Breath. Pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter and roll a dice for that fighter and each other fighter within three inches of that fighter. On a three plus, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. So there's a good one having that fire coming across and I like the way they've used the, the rules there to make it affect other enemy fighters too. And then finally we've got a quad called Sever One Head, another takes its place. And here we remove a number of damage points allocated to this fighter equal to double the value of this ability. So if you get a quad six there, then you can remove 12 damage points from this fighter. So that's not bad at all. You can really get him back in the fight. So some great abilities to get started with. And you'll find a lot of the abilities for the monsters are quite similar but they would have the odd one or two popped in there that really relates to that monster and what they can do. Now we've got the next monster, the Carib Dis, and this is the same kit that you get the War Hydra from, so you can choose to make either model, and it's very similar in stats. We've got 315 points, we've got a weapon range of two, four attack strength five, the movement starts at six, reduces to two, toughness four and 50 wounds, the damage output is going to start with four on a hit, eight on a critical, down to two on a hit and four on a critical. And then we've just got some different abilities. So let's look at those abilities now. So we've just seen the quick with the lash double on the War Hydra. So we won't go through that again, but they can use that one. They've got their own called a triple abyssal howl. Roll a dice for each enemy fighter within a number of inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. On a 3+, plus, until the end of the battle round, the fighter being rolled for cannot make move actions or disengage actions. So they've been screamed at and they're just terrified. They're frozen to the spot. Then we've got a quad called Spike Tail. And here we allocate a number of damage points to all visible enemy fighters within 3 inches of this fighter equal to the value of this ability. So a super powerful quad. If you're getting a 6 there, that's going to do some automatic damage all around. So you can see the War Hydra and Carib Dis uh, different slightly, where the War Hydra can heal themselves, whereas this Carib Disc can really dish out the pain. That's the two for the Grand Alliance of Order, so now let's look at Destruction, and we'll start off with the Aeol Guzzler Gargant, and he's coming in at 305 points. He's got the Brute Room Mark this time, he's got a weapon range of 2 inches, can make 4 attacks, strength 5. His damage, again, is 4 to 8 on a critical, coming down to 2 to 4. He's got a movement that's starting at six, coming down to two, and his toughness is four, and he can take 50 wounds. And he's going to come with three abilities. The first is a double called Drunken Stagger, and here we roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each one to two, subtract one from this fighter's move characteristic until the end of this fighter's activation. For each three plus, add one 
to this fighter's move characteristic until the end of this activation. So there we go. So we can subtract from this fighter's move and we can add to it. So it really depends on the luck of the roll there. Then we've got a triple called Mighty Kick. And until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So nice and simple. As long as you're close, you can just give some automatic damage. And then finally, he's got a quad called Vicious Edbutt. And here we pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. For each four plus, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So there we go. Not as good as the previous monsters we've seen who had a three inch range, but this is a one inch range. So it's taking that different range into account and now making you roll a four plus. So yeah, a little bit different there, but still a pretty nice quad, I think. Next, we've got the Skitter Strand Arachnarok, and this is 325 points, a bit more now. We've got a weapon range of one, four attacks, strength five, and this is gonna deal the same damage, four to eight starting, coming down to two to four. The movement is different though. Here, we're starting off with a bit more. Movement is eight, coming down to four once it's taken those wounds. And it's got a lot more wounds as well. Toughness is still four, but this one can take 55 wounds. So worth those extra 20 points maybe for this guy. But now let's have a look at the abilities which are gonna be different to the ones we've just seen. So the first is a double called Wall Crawler. And until the end of this fighter's activation, do not count the vertical distance moved when this fighter is climbing. So that makes sense. It's gonna scuttle up the wall and get up there really quick. Then we've got a triple called Paralyzing Venom. And until the end of this fighter's activation, after each attack action made by this fighter, roll a dice. On a 2+, plus, until the end of the battle round, the target of that attack action cannot make move actions or disengage actions. So quite similar to some we've seen already. Then we've got a quad dragged victim. Pick an enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter, remove them from the battlefield, and set them up within one inch of this fighter. Then this fighter makes a bonus attack action against that fighter. So this sound is a bit weird at first to me, but then when you consider the base is quite large on this model, you can literally pick them up from within one inch of them on one side, put them round to within one inch of another, and you completely move them, potentially a good few inches, and then you can make a bonus attack against them as well. Now we're on to our third and final model for the destruction, and this is the Dankhold Trogoth, a great looking monster. And he's a little bit low on points, 285, and he's got a weapon range of two inches, three attacks, so one less than before, make him five strength. And then the damage output, again, we're looking at four to eight, coming down to two to four. Movement is quite slow, starting at five, and slowly working its way down to just three though. So we're not losing too much movement there. So he can keep pushing forward, it looks like this guy. He's got a toughness four, and he can take 48 wounds. And with these different room marks, we're gonna get three different abilities. The first is a double called Squiggly Beast Followers. And here we roll a dice for each visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter. If the roll is less than or equal to the value of the ability, then allocate a damage point to the fighter being rolled for. So again, you want high here because you want to roll less or equal to the value of the ability. So if you get a six, you're going to give um, points to all of them. Guaranteed, it looks like. Yep, yeah, that would work. Then we've got another double called Trogoth Regrowth. Remove a number of damage points from this fighter equal to the value of the ability. Nice, easy one. You get a, a value of six. You can take off six damage points. Then finally, we've got a triple called Crushing Grip. Pick one visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. For each four plus, allocate two damage points to that fighter. So this one's not going to put out as much damage, but it'd certainly be fun to have him in the warband. And for 285 points, he's one of the lowest values as well. Now we're on to the Grand Alliance of Death and we're going to start with our Terror Geist. And here he's 350 points, so we're getting quite high now. He's got a weapon range of two, can make four attacks, Strength five, the damage output, again, it's four to eight, coming down to one to two, but the movement's huge here. We're starting at 12, and we're gonna reduce that movement to four. We've got a toughness four, and he can take 50 wounds. And then we've got quite a bit going on in the rune mark department. We've got the rune mark for that screaming skull, so that's for the abilities, the gargantuan rune mark, and the fly rune mark. 
So a nice movement 12 and we can fly here. So this is really good. But the abilities, let's have a look at those now. And the first is a double called Swooping Dive. And here we add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action, they make this activation. So the highest we can do here is three. If we get five or six, we can get three to add to our move characteristic. So then we can fly 15. So that's pretty good. Then we've got a triple called Death Scream. And here we roll one dice for each visible enemy within eight inches of this fire. On a five, allocate a damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of the ability. So you're going to for sure get quite a few enemy fighters within an eight inch. So this could be quite a good one, this triple. Then we've got a quad called Infested with Bats. A fighter can only use this ability if 10 or more damage points have been allocated to them. Then we can allocate a number of damage points to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter equal to the value of the ability. So I really like this one. Once you've taken a little bit of damage, you can just instantly deal some out with as long as you can see them within three inches of you. So a really nice quad. Now we're on to our second monster for the Alliance of Death, and this is the Zombie Dragon. And here, 360 points. This has gone up a little bit. Weapon range of two. Now we can make five attacks. Strength five. And the damage is still going to be four to eight, coming down to one to two. The movement, is, again, is 12, coming down to four. Toughness four, and we can take 50 wounds. Rune marks are the same, except for the brute rune marks. There's going to be some different abilities here, but this one could still fly. So really nice with that 12 movement. But let's have a look at the abilities. And the first is that double swooping dive that we've already seen. So that's the same. The next one is a triple called Sword Like Claws. And here we add half the value of this ability, rounding up to the attacks characteristic of the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation, that has a range characteristic of three or less. So you can really start attacking with this zombie dragon. It's got five attacks already there, um, but now we can add half the value of the ability rounding up so five or six we can add three to that and make potentially eight attacks which is crazy when you consider the damage output starts at four to eight the next ability is a quad called pestilent breath and here we pick a visible enemy fighter within eight inch of this fighter and roll a dice for that fighter and each other fighter within three inches of them on a two to five allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for, equal to double the value of the ability. So this guy's a real beast. For 360 points, you're getting a real lot here. And if you like to go on the attack, I think having that triple and quad is gonna do some serious damage to the enemy. Now we're on to the Order of Chaos and we'll look at the Chimera. And here again, 360 points, nice and high. We can make uh, an attack with a range of two inches. And this is six attacks now. The strength is six. So this one's really strong. And the damage output is a bit higher now. So this is nice. It's five on a hit, 10 on a critical. Movement is 12, which is brilliant, going down to four. And then the toughness is four, can take 50 wounds and can fly as well. So this is pretty impressive for 360 points. Let's have a look at the abilities. The first one is a double called Tail Whip. And we pick a visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter and roll a dice. On a four to five, allocate one damage point to that fighter. And on a six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So that's great. And then we've got a triple called Leonine Roar. And until the end of the battle round, subtract one from the attacks characteristic to a minimum of one of attack actions made by enemy fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So we can really reduce those attacks coming in. That's good. Then we've got a quad called Draconic Head's Fiery Breath. And here we allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of the ability to all visible enemy fighters within four inches of this fighter. So I think this has got to be one of the most brutal monsters we've seen so far. So I really like this one. Our next monster is the Slaughter Brute. And at 330 points, we can make an attack with a range of two inches. We can make five attacks, strength four, and we're back down now dealing damage of four to eight. That's going to go down to two to four. So it's not going to go down really low here. So that's interesting. The movement is eight and it's only going to go down to four. So that's good too. Toughness is four and can take 50 wounds. And then we're going to get some different abilities. So let's look at those now. And our first is a double called Mighty Jaws. And here we pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter 
and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each 3 plus, allocate one damage point to that fighter. Nice and straightforward. Then we've got a triple rampage in charge. Until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch. Allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. Again, nice and straightforward, dishing out some pain. And then finally, we've got a quad called Beast Unbound, where this fighter makes a bonus attack action or a bonus move action. So there we go. So that's pretty handy. I think he could be pretty destructive with that quad as well. Next, we've got the Chaos Gargant at 315 points with a range of two, four attacks, strength five, damage is four to eight, coming down to two to four. Movement starts at six and comes down to two. Got a toughness four, can take 50 wounds. And then we're gonna get some new abilities again for this guy. So let's have a look at those now. These abilities are different to the other Chaos Monsters, but they are exactly the same as the Ale Guzzler Gargant we saw from the Harbingers of Destruction. So we've been through these already, so I won't repeat it, but you can see he can use those three abilities too. Next, we've got the Gorgon, a great model, and at 320 points, we've got a weapon range of two. We can make five attacks, which is awesome, and it's got a strength of six, so he's a tough customer. The damage output is four to 10, and that's gonna to reduce to two to six, so he can still do some serious damage right to the end. He's got a movement of six, and that's gonna be reduced to two. A toughness four and can take 50 wounds. And now let's have a look at those abilities. And first we've got the double roaring charge where we add half the value of this ability rounding up to the move characteristic of this fighter for the next move action they make this activation. So he can steam into the enemy and then we've got a triple slavering more. Pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and then roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each three plus, allocate three damage points to that fighter. So you've got a good chance of doing some damage there. And as long as you get a high value for your ability, you can roll a good number of dice too. Then we've got the quad, a Ravenous Blood Greed. This fighter can make a bonus move action, a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. Then they can make a bonus attack action. So it really is about pushing this guy forward. He's charging in and then he's going to do some damage too. So some nice abilities there for our Gorgon. Next, we've got the Cygor, and this is an alternate version of the model that you get to build from the Gorgon as well. But he's quite different. He's coming in at 305 points, which is less. He's got that weapon range of two. He's only making four attacks. He's only strength four. Um, the damage output is four to eight, being reduced to two to four. And the movement is six, coming down to two. His toughness is four. And he's still got that 50 wounds, though. So let's see the abilities for this guy and see how they kind of change up how this model acts on the battlefield. But it's a real shame to lose that power, that strength and those attacks. So hopefully these abilities will make up for that. And our first is a double called Rip and Tear Masonry. So this fighter can use this ability only if they are within one inch of an obstacle. If they're empty handed, they are no longer classed as being empty handed. So the idea here is they've picked up a, a piece of, of masonry or a boulder. And then it's linked to the next ability, which is a triple called Hurl Boulder. And now this fighter can use this ability only if they're not empty handed. So they've picked something up with that double. Now they can pick a visible enemy fighter within a huge 15 inches of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. For each four plus, you can allocate five damage points to that fighter. So that's quite a lot of damage you could potentially put out here. But after using the ability, you're classed as empty handed again. So you've got to use this double and triple together to keep picking up and throwing that masonry. Then finally, we've got a quad called Soul Eater. And here, roll a dice for each enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter. On a four plus, allocate three damage points to the fighter being rolled for and remove three damage points from this fighter. So they're sucking that energy out of the enemy and into himself. So really nice there. And some interesting abilities that I think is really fun to play with this guy. Next, we've got a Mutalith Vortex Beast, great name. And this one's 310 points. It's got a weapon range of one, so you've got to get getting quite close with this one. We can make four attacks, strength four. Damage is four to eight, being reduced to two to four. Movement is eight, which isn't too bad, but that's only going to be reduced to four. So it's going to go down quite slow. The toughness is four and can take 50 wounds. And now let's have a look at those abilities. And this crazy looking beast starts off with a double called More Tentacles. 
Pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter. That enemy fighter makes a bonus move action directly towards this fighter as if they were jumping, a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. When doing so, they can move away from enemy fighters within one inch at the start of that move action. So you're really drawing them in with those tentacles. Then we've got a triple mutant regeneration. And we roll a number of dice, again equal to the value of the ability. For each four plus, remove three damage points from this fighter. So you can drag them in, you can remove damage points. Let's see what this quad does. This is called Aura of Mutation. And here we allocate a number of damage points equal to half the value of this ability, rounding up to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter. And in addition, roll a dice for each visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter on a six. That fighter cannot activate this battle round. So this guy's not messing around. He's got some really interesting abilities there and he can do some damage and then prevent them even activating. So I really like that quad. And now on to our final monster for the video, which is the Hell Pit Abomination. And this is one crazy looking beast and he's gonna cost you 305 points. He's got a weapon range of two inches, can make five attacks, strength four. Damage is gonna be four to 10, so a little bit high there, that's good. And that's gonna be reduced to two to six. The movement starts at six and reduces to two. Toughness is four, and this one can take more wounds. So he can take 55 wounds, and you can see he's already taken some damage. He's completely stitched up all over the place there. So this guy's a real mess. And now onto his abilities, we've got the first one, which is a double called Regenerating Monstrosity. And here we roll a number of dice equal to the value of the ability. For each four plus, we remove three damage points allocated to this fighter. So that's pretty nice. So we can remove some damage points. Then we've got a triple called Avalanche of Flesh. And until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. And then you just allocate a number of damage points to the fighter equal to the value of this ability. So we see this coming up quite a lot in all the monsters here. Then finally, we've got a quad called Too Horrible to Die. And until the end of the battle round, after each attack action with a range characteristic of three or less that targets this fighter, you roll three dice. For each five plus, allocate three damage points to the fighter that made the attack action. So this is nice. You can actually do some damage back on the enemy that's attacking you. So I like that. And that sums up our final monster for Chaos and our final monster for this video. So there we go, there's all the monsters from all the different Grand Alliances and we've gone through all their stats and everything they can do on the battlefield. For me, the Chaos monsters are standing out big time. I mean, with seven to choose from, that's awesome straight away. But I really like the Chimera, the Slaughter Beast and the Saigor and Gorgon opportunities you've got, I think are fantastic. So some really great models within the Chaos monsters. Um, but I'd love to know what you think. What's your favourite monster from this selection? And which one would you like to add to your warband? I'd love to hear what you think. So join in in the comments section below. It'd be awesome to hear from you. If you're interested in some of the models and you don't have them yet, then I'll put a link in the description below to Element Games. And you can use that link to save up to 20%. You can see here the Sons of Behemoth are discounted to 63.75, saving you 15% but they've got all different savings and all different monsters. Also look at the start collecting sets because the Beast of Chaos one gets you the Saigor or Gorgon option really cheap so that's great value. I can highly recommend that. So that link's in the description. It's an affiliate link but it won't cost you anything extra. You'll save that money and support the channel as I get a small commission too. So thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video. This really was a monster marathon. We had quite a lot to go through but we got there and so if you made it to the end thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And uh, I think the monsters in Warcry are fantastic. And I really want to add some more of these to my collection for sure. But thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions, add it down below. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. It'll be great to see you there.